Okay, following on from the video we done earlier where we looked at Linux Mint Beta 20 Cinnamon Edition, we're now going to take a look at the Linux Mint 20 Beta Mate Edition. So I don't think I've ever even showed Linux Mint Mate on the desktop or if I've actually ever used it before. So we're going to have sort of more of a run through first impressions -y type feel and set it up for a sort of a daily driver and see how I'll go. So we've got the welcome screen here again, which is very simple, well, it's exactly the same from the one that we saw earlier, even down to the fact that we can still change the desktop colours. We'll look at that in a moment and see how it actually works on this Mate desktop. But before we do that, let's run an update in the terminal. And let's also grab HTOP while we're there as well. Right, we're going to let that do that, and then we're going to have a look at what it actually comes installed with out of the box, because like I said, I've never actually used Linux Mint Mate, and if I have, it was very brief and I don't remember. So we've got a nice little menu here with some categories of places and system settings down by the left here, where you also have your quit, logout, lock screen, terminal, control center, package manager, and software manager. So one will be Synaptic and the other will be the uh, Mint software manager store thing. There we go, that's going to tr have any trouble finding things at the moment because we are running these apt commands in the terminal, so we won't worry about that for now. So let's have a look at what accessories we get. So we get a calculator, which will probably be the GNOME calculator by the looks of it. Calculator 3.36.0, I do believe that is the GNOME calculator. I could be wrong, but it looks very much like it to me. Could also be the Mate one, but it looks like the GNOME calculator. So we have GNOME disks installed out of the box, we have GNOME, image viewer, which is X Viewer version 2.6.0, okay. I must say, it looks very much similar to their Cinnamon version, doesn't it, with just the one panel at the bottom. I think if I was to choose which one I was gonna use out of this and Cinnamon so far, just based on appearance-wise, I think this looks a bit nicer, to be honest. I know it's very similar looking, but I just prefer the way the panel looks and the menu here looks. Right, let's keep going. So that's in accessories. We have Image Viewer on board. It also comes with Redshift, which changes the temperature color of the screen so if you're like looking at your screen at night it will give you a nicer color so it wouldn't strain your eyes and things like that and keep you awake we have screenshot that looks a bit like the name screenshot tool doesn't it let's open up the help page here does it tell us what screenshot tool this is it does look like the name screenshot tool no it's the mate screenshot tool it looks very similar Okay, the internet's just disconnected. That'll be something to do with the update that we're running. I won't worry about that too much. Notifications pop up at the top right there. So this is Mate Screenshot. Let's keep going. We have Mate Font Viewer, Text Editor, which is going to be Z or something. XED. It is indeed Z version 2.6.0. Okay, cool. Nice, simple text editor. And then it has Warpinator. So we're going to have a quick look at Warpinator. I have a VM running on another computer to my left. So we're going to see how that works. So it's running another version of Linux Mint. So hopefully it will find that. It's all on the same network. So I'm hoping that it does find the computer that's running. There we go. So let's see how it actually works to send a file over. So let's just create a file in Z. And let's just say from mate. And we're going to click save and we're also going to send one to this computer to see how that works as well right we're just going to change uh, save that in documents there and just call it mate okay cool so i'm quite excited about this because i've not actually used warpinator i did try and use it on the first video but we didn't have another computer running on the same network with it on so now we should be able to do that without any worry so as you can see there's tyler vm so if we just click that so i'm going to guess it's a drag and drop kind of thing or you can do send files and minus and you have a little favorite button there so let's have a look at what that does so it just favorites it and lets you know that this is a favorite connection of yours and then you can click back on it so let's go into the documents now and see how that actually works so i'm going to transfer that over i've got to accept on this virtual machine one second click accept waiting for approval and completed okay that was very straightforward okay i'm going to try and send one to this computer now and see how that works bear with me for just a moment i'm going to send a wallpaper that i've been using Right, drag and drop, click accept, that will open up in your notifications again in your top right. Completed, that's very nice and straightforward. So where does that save that to? Aha, so we have a folder here called Warpinator in our home folder. And as you can see, there is a new picture there that was just sent. So let's cut that into our home pictures folder. And let's quickly add that to our desktop wallpapers as well. So let's go to change desktop background. 
Okay, we're getting a bit of a lag there loading the photos. So I'm going to imagine it's got more photos in the cinnamon version than it does indeed. Right, so if we just click this add and we're going to, no, we're not getting a sort of a preview of the thumbnail there, but it works anyway. There we go. So I quite like this wallpaper at the moment. I've been using it quite a bit. Nice, simple little autumn tree there. Right, let's keep moving. So that's Warpinator, quite a cool little tool actually. And I do believe it should now run in your background in your startup applications. Let's just have a look. And it does. So you won't, once you've opened it the first time, you won't have to reset it up. It will just load there. And there is the little system icon there. And then you can also browse the computer that you just sent things to and browse. So you can select files to send straight to it from there as well. That's pretty handy. Okay, cool. I really like this actually. I think it's quite cool. Right, let's close that and uh, let's close that. So let's keep going. Has our update finished? It has indeed. Let's just open up HTOP and see what it's saying at the moment. So it did create a swap file of two gigs. So I didn't do an erase disk. I did a manual install of just an EFI partition and a root. No swap partition and it's made us a swap file there of about two, uh, two gig. So let's keep going. So that was in accessories and I do believe Warpinator was the last entry. It was indeed. So graphics is looking quite bare actually. You get document scanner, drawing and pics. In internet, you get Firefox as your default web browser, Hexchat IRC, Thunderbird as your default email client, and it comes with transmission to manage your torrents. You then get the full LibreOffice suite, which should be the latest version, 6.4 point something or other. Let's have a look. It's version 6.4.3.2, and it will have it. Well, it should have all the dictionary stuff enabled out of the box as well. There we go. Brilliant. And let's see how Windows snapping side by side works out of the box. Works all good. Do we have a four-way snap or is it just, we do have a four-way snap, brilliant. So we can do four-way splitting out of the box. And we will look at the welcome screen in a moment, don't worry, because we're just gonna check out the um, theming and the color switcher. And let's open up, say, this one here and just get a four-way snap going. There we go, works as you would expect, nice. Okay, let's uh, move that back up there so we can keep an eye on that RAM as we're moving around. We can now close it, obviously we don't need to open, uh, keep that open. Let's close that. I do quite like the default mate theme actually. Right, we're gonna keep welcome screen open because we're gonna have a look at that in a moment as well. So that was Office and it's sound and video. So it comes with celluloid as your sort of movie player version 0 0.19, which is also obviously a GTK front end for MPV. And then let's have a last little look at, so you get rhythm box as well as your music player and then your sound settings there. And in system tools you have File browser, which will be Kajar, Time Shift, which again we showed in the first video when we was looking at Cinnamon, so I'm not going to really bother getting too much into that one. But that will just make a snapshot of your computer using R-Sync or the other, what was the BTRF? No, I can't remember. Anyway, let's go back a moment. Previous. Yeah, it is BTRFS, so it's R-Sync or BTRFS you can choose there. Close. So we're not going to bother making one. Let's keep going. So we also have system monitor, do, 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 do. we installed HTOP, yeah, not a lot to see there. Okay, so we also have another backup tool. Okay, I've not actually used this backup tool before. Let's do a quick run through of the backup tool. So select where you want to save the backup file. So it has a default selection of backups. I'm not quite sure where that actually is, but we'll, okay, documents and backups is where it saves it. So let's exclude some files and see how that works. Let's exclude the mate, and then let's go forward and apply okay so you've successfully saved in home Tyler documents backups and it does it into a .tar file archive so let's have a look at that now so if we go into documents backups and there we go so there's that backup we've just created obviously it was a very quick backup because we have nothing to back up so it will take you longer if the more stuff you have okay so we've just backed up the pictures file folder there just literally just zips it into a file, doesn't it? So we can just open it up straight away. That's not too bad, actually. I quite like that. Very straightforward and just simple backup tool there. Okay, so that was the backup tool. We also have the driver manager. We don't need to worry about that. We don't have anything to grab from there. We have the login, windows, printers, software manager. We'll do a little trial run of the software manager after a reboot. I do want to not bog it down too much before I get a RAM reading at boot. So we're not going to worry about that too much for now. I can see why people like this software store actually the more I open it and look at it. Very straightforward, simple interface, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. Okay, cool. So let's keep moving. We also have Synaptic to manage your packages if you want to get a bit more detail on your packages and a bit more control. Update manager, time and date, and add or remove user groups and things like that. 
Right, so the preferences will mainly be mate stuff, as far as I can tell. Also have the QT5 settings there. Startup applications, Windows, the welcome screen, main menu. So let's open up. Okay, so it uses Compiz. I don't know if it uses it as its default out of the box, though. No, so the default Windows manager it does use is Macro Plus Compositing. But as you can see, you could click Compiz there and enable Compiz to get things like wobbly windows and stuff like that. So you can also go for System Font in Toolbar. Okay, let's have a look. Huh, looks a bit nicer like that. As you can see, it's a more of a bold, bigger font. And if we go to the System Font in Title Bar, it's uh, more of a slimmed down non boldy kind of font and I quite like that. Right, let's click that. So this is don't show window while dragging windows. So let's have a look at how that works. Okay, so it gives the window a grid instead of painting the window. Oh, we've got some artifacting there though, haven't we? Okay, let's turn that off and see if we can get rid of that. There you go, magic. <laughs> okay, so what else have we got on desktop? So we can remove all of these icons there, very easy. And you can also show icons on the menus. We'll leave that on though. Show icons on menus, show icons on buttons. Okay, so th doing that has now put a little sort of question mark on the help. So just turn it back off and then help is question mark free. It's a bit cleaner without that, so we'll leave it like that. So that's your desktop settings. Let's see what other stuff we've got there. So as I said, we're not gonna worry about compis, but like I say, you know, you can get all your sort of desktop cubes and wobbly windows and a pacify and things like that. Uh, what else do we have? Windows, startup applications, screensaver, main menu. So you can change the main menu here and then you get a bit more control, add categories as you see fit or remove them if you like. Okay, so if we wanted to just add games, we'd click that and then the games category would appear there. But we don't think we have any games installed, so we don't really need to worry. Okay, cool. Let's see what else we've got here. So let's go into the main control center. And here is what will house all of your sort of settings for the most part. So as you can see, you've got your administration settings for things like software manager and printers. And in hardware, you have, do you not think printers should be in hardware? I don't know. And then in hardware, you have things like Bluetooth, disks, which will open up GNOME disks. It will indeed. And as you can see, this is the disk that it's installed on, one EFI and one root. So that SOP file, we didn't create a partition. That is literally just a SOP file. Anything else in here that I want to have a look at? Okay, so the appearance setting here. We're not going to change the appearance unless we use the um, welcome screen now because I want to see how that works. Okay, the window preview looked a bit weird then. Hovering over this as well will also give you a preview of the window that's currently open. Right, so you can change all of this, got all of the colors there and then obviously you can add the darker theme and you can install more themes and you can customize them as well which will probably let you change the icons that you're clicking on so backgrounds like i say we've already changed that background to the one that we've had the custom background but there are a lot more to choose from as opposed to the cinnamon version that we just looked at and there's your fonts and then your interface again where show icons in menu and preview and stuff like that okay pretty cool so let's go back I just want to see if there's anything else we want to look at in the settings manager there, or control center as they call it. Well, mate calls it. Is there anything else? A firewall configuration. Let's type our password in. Okay, same firewall as you saw in the last cinnamon video. Very simple and easy to set up. And like someone said in a comment, slow animations, and I think I agree with you. Very slow animations there. You wouldn't get sort of any head spin from that, would you? Okay, cool. Right. Anything else I want to look at in here before we do a reboot and then install some programs and set it up for some daily usage. So in Windows Preferences, this will change the focus of the window. So you see as I move my mouse to this window, nothing really happens. But if I was to do that, you can see the focus of it changes to that current window. So now that the mouse is over there, you can see that, no, it's still on there, but it just changes the focus. Okay. I'm not a massive fan of that though. So if you look at the bottom panel as well, you can see that it's changing from Windows Preferences to Control Center, back to Windows Preferences, all from just hovering over it. I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'll keep that off. So placement again, center new windows and enable windows tiling. Okay, cool, let's get out of that. And I do believe that the laptop that's running the VM is going crazy. So we're just gonna close that VM very quickly because I can just hear the fan spinning up. 
Right, is there anything else we want to look at before reboot? Yes, we want to check the welcome screen, don't we, and do the color switching. So I'm going to open up the file manager, as I said, which is Kajar, and we're going to see how it works. So in the Cinnamon one, we didn't have to close any uh, windows to repaint them with the new theme, so hopefully it does the same thing here. So let's change color to blue. Brilliant, so it's changed that straight away. Again, the address bar is different, and then the window that you're currently got open has changed the color as well. And let's do the dark theme. Brilliant, I'm actually quite impressed with that. It changes it it's sort of in real time. There's no need to close and reopen it to repaint the window. Nice, I quite like their dark theme as well. Very cool. Right, what we're gonna do is do a very quick reboot and we're gonna sort of see how quick it takes, how long it takes to actually reboot. We are on a capture card so we don't have to worry about anything like that. It will be a grub screen that we have to click enter on though. It won't be straight away because there is another Arch install on this computer at the moment. So far though, I think I'm kind of preferring this to the cinnamon version a little bit. It might just be because this is the first time I've actually used a Mate one though, so it feels a bit more sort of new. As you can see, we've got the grub screen there, so we're just gonna click enter and see how quick it is. And there we go. Loading up. Do we have auto login? We should do. There we go, so we are in business. Let's not show that dialog at startup. Let's close that. Run HTOP. So we're using 570 megabytes RAM usage. That's pretty damn good to be honest. Don't have to worry about that. And it'll probably be a little bit lower still if we were to disable the welcome screen straight away. That probably chucks on a couple of megabytes. Okay, so let's install some stuff and get this looking how I like to use a desktop environment. So let's grab Plank. And I'm not going to bother installing any themes actually because I don't mind this theme and you can switch it to the dock quite easily. So we're just going to go for Plank and we're going to get some different applications. So there's no there's no GIMP here and we're going to want to grab Caden Live to edit this video on. So we're going to do Caden Live in an app image though. Before I do that, I'm going to imagine this one also has Flatpak installed like the Cinnamon version. It does indeed. Obviously there will be no snap, the same as the Cinnamon version, the same as all the Mate versions. So I'm just going to grab that for now then because I shouldn't need anything else for the most part for the moment. Chuck a Y there. And do we have the Plank themes installed? No, we need to download them. I was going to send them off the VM but we've turned it off. I was going to do the Warpinator again. Right, download Ken Harley Plank themes and it's just a nice sort of trio of themes there which is the shade, anti-shade and paper material. So we're going to save that. And we've got Plank installed now I do believe. There we do. So let's close all of this now. And is that has finished downloading. Close tab. Let's move this panel to the top. Top. And now we're going to want to remove some things, aren't we? So what have, we're just going to want to remove these quick launches and the um, Windows title bar, the Windows uh, task manager, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to unlock it from panel and we're just going to remove from panel. Um, we'll leave the quick launches there for now. They're not too sort of egregious or annoying, are they? Okay, so let's open up Plank. I don't know why it always gives us two icons for certain programs. Right, let's remove that one. And now we need to install one of those themes that we've just downloaded. We're going to use Shade as always. So we're going to go home, dot local, share, and plank. We're going to extract it straight into there, and that is done. So now we should be able to just select that theme straight away. Go to Shade, bring that all the way down, sorted. And let's get GIMP, which will be version 2.10.18. I do believe 2.10.18. A 10.18, uh, 2.10.20 has just been released, so I think that's the new version number. This is 2.10.18. But yeah, no, very impressed with this one actually. I will definitely do another follow up video once the final release has come out. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.